I'm not sure how familiar you are with this, Joel, but you know how you have the two extremes where you have kind of what you're doing, higher volumes, twice a day training. And then you have the that Mike Menser kind of obsession with one all out set to like complete and utter failure that people think that they're doing. And let's be honest, nobody's doing that in the gym. They just want an, an excuse to just do one set. 99% of the people listening are not doing that. And maybe there's a small percentage of like the really elite professional natural bodybuilders who have earned that because they look that way it's like it's no doubt that maybe they are doing that and even that's questionable so i don't know if you have something to add there but i just think it's yeah. a fascinating topic right i do i'd really love to give my unsolicited opinion on the uh the hit training i say this with absolute confidence that there has not been a single person since dorian yates that is training in that fashion and they don't even come close and in saying that the only two people that made you know serious success of that type of training was dorian yates and his predecessor mike mensa and i guess his brother mm -hmm. But they both took steroids and we don't know what steroids and we don't know what other drugs outside of that. So it's not to say that that style of training can't work, but people are so much more attracted to the lack of volume than they are the actual style of training. Like I said, we have not seen anyone since Dorian Yates train in that fashion. And I don't mean train doing such few sessions and such few sets. I mean, training to that level of intensity with such few sessions and such yes. few sets. I don't think we'll ever see it again because especially now when people are so consumed by tracking everything and counting their calories and, and all the rest of it, especially for those guys that are natural, if you're training like that, like where, you know, you're only, what was it, maybe like training three times a week maximum and training or like trying to fit your workout in with such few sets, like it's not even enough to maintain like a low level of body fat. And I think that's why it sort of might work well for someone that is taking steroids or using some form of enhancements. I'm not the type of person to say like, oh, that's just definitely not going to work for some natural athletes. I wouldn't be surprised if it never does that style of training. And it's not to say you have to train as um, frequently as I do and get the same result. Like I know like my best mate and business partner, Brock, doesn't train nearly as often as I do. And yet he still has a very similar physique to that of mine. And there's definitely been times where he's had more muscle mass than I have had. But part of it is purely because I love, like I said before, like I love training. I want to go back. I can't wait to train again. So right. that's why I do it the way I do it. Also, I've just seen good results from that. And that's again, why I say learn your body. Maybe it's not going to work for you doing what I do, but at least if you do try something, do it for a proper sort of six to eight week period and give it 110%. Don't just sort of fart us around for two weeks and expect some instant gratification and expect instant results. Like it's unfortunately going to take a lot of time. Yeah. And I think that scares people. It's interesting because like you had mentioned where you, you, you do have to experiment, you have to go through a trial and error with this because there's probably a, a large portion of people who are attracted, like you said, to that hit style of training and wonder why they don't get results doing it because they're not, they're not doing it. Like that's not what, so now you've just decreased your volume and you've decreased your effort essentially. So, and, and then you're wondering why you're not growing. Right. So, and the answer isn't more effort. Sometimes it's more practice, more sets, more volume. And there's a reason why it's worked for, or it's put on muscle for more bodybuilders than it hasn't. That's my take on that. And I've been back and forth. I've tried both ends. It's one of those things where you have the people that say, oh, if you're natural, you can't handle high volume. Oh, if you're natural, you can't handle high intensity. It's like, so which one, where does the natural guy go? Well, then you're going to have to figure out which end of the extreme you you lie, essentially. And based on what you said, what you enjoy too, right? Like what's going to keep you coming back to the gym? I think that's also important. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so with the failure thing, I'm curious, do you have to watch a little bit how you approach your training effort from what i'm hearing it doesn't sound like you're the type who has like a log book and you're writing down the amount of reps that you're doing and you you're, you kind of are more of an artist it seems like with this especially with the whole just your image that you've put out there the old school the film everything but yeah maybe you want to elaborate with how you approach training to failure and if that's something you're concerned about because obviously you have the volume thing that you're you're more prioritizing i would say yeah to right so do you want to talk a little bit about that though yeah, I should say I, I do train to failure. You know, there might be a total of 20 sets, but a lot of those sets, the majority of those sets are sort of, I mean, what I would call warm up sets. They would still be very mm. hard for a lot of people. Like when people, I think, watch me train 
or train with me, they're there ready to spot me. I'm like, no, it's okay. This is like, it's still a warm up set. You know, I've done like maybe three warm up sets. A lot of people just get straight into, they just go pick up, like they'll do something like this. Yeah, don't run. Yeah, yeah. yeah and they, they don't actually warm up on the exercise they're about to perform, which is then taking the body and like body mechanics through a completely different motion. And they don't warm up on that. They just think doing some like, I don't know, mumbo jumbo and then picking up like the heaviest possible weight they can say for a bench press or whatever is like the answer. And like, that's their idea of like a working set or a set to failure. But I think if you're really trying to achieve failure, you've got to sort of work your way up to that set, that sort of all that set of failure. So I would do like upward of sort of three or four sort of warm up sets. And then it's one or two sets to failure. That last set definitely being to like all out failure, which I, I think I do mention in like the training videos I put up on YouTube. I mentioned that. Yes, um, you do, You have. Yep. Yeah. From what I've watched. I guess for, for your viewers, yeah, that's what I, that's definitely what I do. And I am, although I'm not, again, meticulous about writing everything down, I've never had a logbook or no journal of my training sessions. I do have a very good memory and I remember almost exactly what I do the previous session. So say if I, I train chest, I do remember the weight I lifted and everything. And I'm somewhat conscious of that. But again, it's, I'm not so fixated on like progressive overload in terms of just trying to lift more weight over time, because that to me doesn't make a lot of sense because you can only go so far with that. It's like, if that was the answer, that's why I don't believe that there's like a di direct correlation between weight lifted and muscle obtained or acquired, because if that was the case, everyone would be lifting a thousand kilos. That was like you know, on the Olympia stage and vice versa, everyone that was really skinny would be lifting next to nothing. And that's not true at all. There's a lot of guys that are a lot smaller than me, a lot less muscular, lifting a lot more than me and, and lifting it with good form because that's a lot of that's neuromuscular. It's not, it's not going to um, directly contribute to muscle growth. So there's other things in, at play there that people tend to be ignoring, but I am conscious of the weight lifted. I'm, I'm conscious of what I did the previous session and what I try and do is just at least on say one exercise, say if it's like I did dips for chest and I did just body weight and I did it five sets of 15 reps, I'll try and just at least improve on one set. So if I did 15 reps on my last set, the previous session, I'll try and get, you know, 17 or 20, or I'll do it like weighted. I'll add 10 kilos, mm. like wrap 10 kilos or around my waist on a belt, something like that, something where I can make very small improvements but it's not necessarily going to be just increasing the weight or i'll even just slow the tempo down i'll reduce the rest periods something like that where the intensity does improve but again it's well i shouldn't say again but over time it's not like it's always going to improve there's going to be peaks and troughs and that sort of thing but uh, a lot of how i train is uh, is on how i feel training i want to tap into that uh, joel now you have your your ebook collection right that you put out yeah. uh, is that typically what you essentially follow for yourself is that typically your routine if you will yeah the idea behind like making those was because when i did start to get some following like i was getting a lot of questions